I'm Cheryl Kashani. I chair the city's uh, Commission on Sustainability. And uh, I want to welcome you and thank you for coming to our annual town hall meeting. This is really an awesome collection of Baltimoreans. So, so really, really thank you for coming. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't start by giving a special shout out and thank you to Alice Kennedy. Where's Alice Kennedy? And Kristen, where's Kristen Baja? They're behind the, they're, they, they, they're be, they said we want to do something different this year and we said go for it and this is what they did and we're really grateful that they were able to pull this off. So tonight's meeting is important to, they both work in the Office of Sustainability. So this, the commission and the office, this is our annual meeting and it's it, it, a significant meeting for us in a, for a number of reasons. One. It continues our tradition of gathering people together for the, the release of our annual report. There's a table directly in that corner over there, and they've got discs, and the annual report is on a disc. I encourage you to each take a disc, because it shows you what progress we're making in meeting our, our citywide sustainability goals, and there's a terrific section on all the success stories to show you, you know, who really is uh, stepping up and doing some terrific work in Baltimore. And um, Baltimore is already distinguishing itself nationally on a lot of the work we're doing in water and trees and uh, energy, you name it. So, but you can read about it in the annual report. Um, another reason th this is important is it's a chance to engage people around some very focused work. Last year we talked a lot about climate change and the effects it was having and why it's important um, to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. And we because we know it's having an effect on our, our town and our city and our neighborhoods already. Mm. And we talked about solar energy and renewable energy and reducing your energy costs um, and all that we could do together. And in fact, there were some terrific um, articles in the Baltimore Sun today about the domino sugar sign that's now going to be uh, driven by solar energy and about a uh, regional manufacturing institute that's going to help manufacturers save energy. That's stuff that we all have to continue to do. But while we are doing things to uh, reduce the impacts of climate change, we actually have to do something now because our city is already being affected by severe weather events. We know this. We can debate it till the cows come home, but you don't have to be a genius to know this is happening now. There's more flooding, it's hotter, there's more asthma, right? Tonight's meeting is about how we can prepare ourselves to cope and manage our affairs and be more prepared and be more resilient given what's already going on. And it's about making a plan, building a kit, and helping each other. So that's really what we're here to do tonight. I'm going to introduce the mayor. Well, I don't have to really introduce the mayor. <laughs> I'll be audacious and say I'm going to introduce the mayor. If we. You couldn't do all of this if you didn't have a supportive, strong leader like Mayor Stephanie Rollins Blake. So let's just give her a hand. Because to do all of this, you need strong people in a lot of parts of government. You need strong leaders in communities. You need strong leaders in businesses. You need strong nonprofits. And you need somebody behind all that that says, go for it. Doesn't get in the way, doesn't micromanage, just lets, lets people like Alice and Kristen and Beth just lead and do their jobs. And I think that's why it's so awesome. So we really appreciate that. Um, she's going to say a few words. We're really psyched that she's here tonight. Then I'm going to just come back and say, you know, let's keep making plans, building kits, and helping each other because this is not a meeting. So like, this is the speech. Like, that's it. After she talks, we're going to go back to doing, this is a roll up your sleeves kind of meeting. Okay. All right, so we're going to introduce, I will introduce Mayor Stephanie Rawlings-Blake, and I really am glad you're here. Thank you. Cheryl, thank you for the introduction and for all of your hard work, and, and I appreciate you giving the credit to me. Um, however, this, on, this only works when there are com strong, committed people who have the capacity to do this type of work. And to think we have this many people from all over the city for a disaster preparedness and sustainab uh, sustainability event, and that only in Baltimore can we make it this fun. So I want to thank you and the members of the Sustainability uh, Commission uh, for all of your hard work. And I want to thank our, oh, I was about to say. <laughs> I want to thank the Director of uh, Planning, Tom Stoser. And I also want to thank Delegate Mary Washington, who I saw, there you are, uh, here as, as well. And, 
Yeah, where is Stein? Thank you, Doug and Stein, for being here as well. He's a big, uh, big supporter in regionalism. Um, so anyway, the commission has, has a track record of engaging the residents and making Baltimore a sustainable, uh, sustainable city. As many of you know, Baltimore has ex uh, experienced changes in our climate uh, that many other uh, cities across the world have experienced. Over the last five years, let's just think about it. We've seen some intense and extreme weather. The derecho of 2012, who even heard of a derecho before 2012? I never even heard of a derecho, but we got one. The extreme cold, the relentless cold of this past what, uh, winter, Snowmageddon in 2010, we've had hurricanes, tornado, earthquakes, floods, what, are, what am I missing? Uh, well, the locust, the locust gave us a little bit of a break. I remember when, when, uh, when I was in high school, we were, we were collecting the cicadas and trash bags. We had so many of them. So we, they gave us a break, so I'm not going to count the locusts. Heat waves. Heat waves, yes, the horrible heat waves which are coming. But anyway, it's just a few examples of the extreme uh, weather that we've experienced. And we're taking a proactive, a proactive approach to both adapt to and mitigate uh, the effects of these natural hazards while also planning for uh, climate impacts that we anticipate to have in the future. In 2013, the city of Baltimore, led by the Office of Sustainability, adopted the Disaster Preparedness Project Plan, known as DP3. Again, only the sustainability folks can make disaster preparedness sound like a, you know, like some kind of action movie, DP3. <laughs> DP3 is an innovative and comprehensive approach to becoming a more resilient and sustainable city. And I'm proud to say that this plan is the first of its kind in the country. And it's a model for how other cities can approach preparing for climate change. Today's event is just the first step in our efforts to ensure our residents are prepared for natural hazard events so that we're better able to respond and to recover. I say it all the time, the, the more that you're prepared, the, the more that we can focus the city's resources on areas of real need. But when you're not prepared, that stretches the need and stretches our resources thin. So this is very important work. Just last week, you know, y'all were all there. The, the rains, it seemed like they weren't going to stop. You know, we've had rains where we've had, to, we've had to rescue people from their cars. But by providing residents with the opportunity to work alongside the experts who are here today to build an emergency kit and other um, ways that we can build the strong ties together, we can make sure that we weather these types of storms and have a plan of action so we can make sure that more of our Baltimore, Baltimore residents remain safe. This will enhance our neighborhood's ability to respond, to recover, to increase communication, and build stronger neighborhoods. So, this is going to be a fun night, and not the least of all, for the kids who are here, I'd like to introduce, well, I should say the kids and the, the, the young at heart, I would like to introduce Turtle, who is here today. Yay. Turtle is our adorable sustainability messenger who will be out in the community engaging everyone on these important, uh, important issues. And who's not going to take good information from that cute turtle? Everybody's going to take good information. I'm not 100% sure who's in the turtle. Thing. <laughs> Just turtle. Everybody I thought was going to be in there is out here. So I'm not, I'm not sure where we just turtle just just turtle we'll figure it out later i'll figure it out later all right so tonight is about making a plan building a kit and helping one another this is a key message that we hope residents uh take away from this event and i hope you take away from this take it away from this event and talk to your neighbors about it the only reason i know that you're here is well, number one well, i should not the only reason a couple of reasons i know that you well, care about it yourself but you're the type of people who care about it for yourself and for your community. So please, please, please spread the word. Make sure that everyone in your community is prepared and has the resources that are available to them. For many, almost all of this is free of charge, right? We're not charging for everything. Everything's free of charge. So we want to make sure that everyone takes advantage of it. So together we are building a sustainable, resilient, and a growing Baltimore. So I want to thank you all for coming out, and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful evening. Thank you. Next is an emergency radio. Thank you. First aid kit. Yeah, first aid kit. What else do we have? We have your water.
water. We just have water bladders. So this is the whole water, emergency water, so backup water that you need. It's uh, good to have. The paper you were giving at the beginning? At the beginning. Okay. Thank you. Wet nap naps. Yes. And sanitary beds. It's the most important thing. But then the window, if you need help for your safety, is waiting for your window. Yeah. All right. Everybody else. And that is your kit. There is data actually that indicates that we already are seeing increased severity and intensity of different uh, hazard events and that's going to continue to increase into the future. So we want people to be prepared ahead of time to think proactively and plan ahead. And this is a good event for us to come together as a community and start to build stronger community ties, get people prepared by making plans, building emergency kits in which all the materials are actually provided for free, and then work with all of our different city agencies, our state and federal agencies to come together and uh, help each other build stronger community.